talks about his love in verse 12. Verse 12, he says, uh, this is my commandment, that he love one another as I have loved you. See, that's, that comes out of that, that purpose. That's your purpose, that you love one another. Greater love had no man than this, that the man would lay down his life for his friend. That was Jesus' purpose, that he would lay down his life for his friend. He also had a priority. His priority was to have that intimacy with God the Father. He says in, in John 5, 519, 520, he said, I can do nothing of my own. You know, everything that I do is because I, I see the Father doing. So he had that intimacy, that mental experience with the Father at all times. And the same experience you can have with Jesus. You have to abide in Him. He says, Ye are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. You see, He, he gives them a, another command. He says, I, I, You are my friends. But how would I know if you are my friends? You see, you got to do what I tell you. Some, some uh, uh, parents, they have children, you know, and they tell their children to do certain things. You know, they can say, you know, if you are my children, if you, if you are my friends, you will do what I tell you because you respect me and you love me. But if you have children that, that refuse to do what their parents tell them to do, then there is a problem in there. There is something that's mediating inside there that's an evil force. And we have to rid that. You see, and Jesus, Jesus went about and knew that. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus uh, with power and with the Holy Ghost and he went about doing good and, and, and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and we need to have God with us we need to have that, that, that mental uh, experience at all times so that God can be with us we can go about doing good which is our purpose and we'll have the power even as it says in Mark 16 to cast out devils you see now, this, this, is, this is what it's all, this Christian life is based on the foundation of love. The Bible says in 1 John, uh, 1 John that, that God is love. You see, God is love. And, and we need to have that love being spread abroad in our hearts. Verse uh, 15, he says, uh, Henceforth I call you not servants, uh, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father. You see, I have made known unto you. He says, I'm not going to call you a servant anymore. Some, somewhere in, in, in the gospel here, uh, some of the apostles would describe themselves a servant of the Lord. Now, we've got to differentiate between servant and servant. A servant of the Lord is the one who is doing the will of the Lord. A servant, in this case here, we're talking about like a slave. You see? Uh, and the slave and the master. The slave doesn't know what the master is doing. But you see, he is saying here, I, I, I'm gone further. I'm not just going to call you uh, one who works for me. No, I, I call you my friend because if you're my friend, then everything that I hear from my father, I'm going to share it with you so that we are all one. We, we have a communication, a continuous communication, just like what Jesus had with the father. That's that mental experience. If you stay connected to Jesus via the word, then you will have and experience that mental experience that he had with the Father. What a wonderful and great power that evolves from that. And he goes on to say here that um, he's made it known unto you. Unto you, who are you? See, you are now sons. You're no longer uh, servants. You are now sons. Galatians 4, 7 says, because ye are sons, you become heirs of God through Jesus Christ. So because of Christ, because of that abiding in Christ, uh, you now become a son, you become an heir, you can share all the blessings in heaven, in the heavenly places through Christ Jesus. It says, ye have not chosen me, you know, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that, that, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now see, uh, that's, that's it again. He ordained you. He has chosen you. In John 6, 17, he looked at his disciples and he, uh, and he says, Look, haven't I chosen all of you? And one is a devil. He has chosen you. You did not choose Christ. Christ has chosen you. You see? Because you, you can't come to Christ unless the Father grants it. You see? So, so he has chosen you. But watch this. And I want, you to, um, I want you to take a closer look at this whenever you have time. Uh, look at it and see what you get. He says that ye shall ask of the Father in my name, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, listen to these words, he may give it you. I want you to examine the way this language is put out here. Okay? He may give it you. 
No, we could very well say that he, whatever you ask, he will give it to you. We can very well say that, and, and perhaps it does really mean this. But I want you to look at another translation. When he says he may give it you, I want you to look at... Now, this seems to, in, 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 uh, uh, it seems to imply that, that, that when he would give it you, means that he would be giving you to the thing that you ask for. And that's a great possibility. Now, I want you to look at John. Let's look at John. There's another place here. John chapter 10. We'll just quickly go back. John 10, 29. Listen to the language again. My Father, which gave them me. My Father, which gave them me. He didn't give them to me. Watch the, watch the language. My Father, I'm going to just phrase it. My Father, which gave them to me. That's not what's here in, the, in, in this gospel. It says, my Father which gave them me. So what it means here in this, in this verse that God the Father gave Jesus to us. He gave them me. So God the Father gave Jesus to us. Watch that translation. All right? The point I'm trying to make here is that you can be handed over to the things that you ask for. You can be handed over to the things that you so desire. I want you to watch in one of the translation here. Uh, just look at Romans 1, 27. Let's see if we can find that. Romans 1, 27. Listen to what it says here in verse uh, 28. I'll just read from 27. It says, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, 